Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often and all the time. Find somebody close to you, keep your distance, just look at them and say, neighbor, God loves you and I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Amen. So good to see everybody here this morning. I would ask that you keep me in your prayer this morning. Old devil thought he had a trick up his sleeve this morning. He said he's going to give me a little migraine. When I woke up this morning, he's going to try and trouble me. But I repeat the words of you, Deacon Campbell, that the devil is a liar. And Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. The devil is a liar. So we're going to go on forward. Is that all right? So good to see everybody. So good to be in God's house. All of the men here, all of the fathers, I'd like to take this opportunity to say happy Father's Day to all of you. And all of the soon-to-be fathers, happy Father's Day to y'all as well. Amen. Amen. To all of you that are tuning in with us live this morning via our live streaming services, whether that be YouTube, whether that be Twitter, whether that be Facebook, we just want to welcome you here into the services here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. And if God ever permits you to be in our era, pray that you come out and visit us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. We're located at 7009 Wilson Boulevard, where they tell me that the gospel is preached. You heard it from them, you hear it from me, so come check it out for yourself. Anybody come hear a word from the Lord this morning? Now, I'm going to be friendly today. I'm going to be friendly since it's Father's Day. I'm going to give you a Sunday school lesson and we're going to go home. Is that all right? All right. All right. Follow me to the book of Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. And we're going to I want to read verses five through 17. Y'all got time for that? All right. It's just something about reading. Like Brother Campbell says, just something about reading the word of God and allowing the word of God to become alive to you. It's one thing for somebody else to tell you what it said. But it's another thing for you to read it for yourself. All right, Acts chapter 12, verses 5. We're going to start there, and we're going to conclude at verse number 17. And the Bible says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and a light shined in the prison. And he smacked Peter on the side of commanding, slapping Peter now, smacking him on the side, and raising him up and arising quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Well, what a mighty God we serve. And the angel said unto him, Gird yourself, and the bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate that led unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Didn't even have to put their hands on it. And they went out and passed out through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from them. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and have delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he said to the house of Mary and the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken by the name of Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said to her, you crazy, sister, in so many words, you're mad. Peter locked up. And it says that but Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. In verse number 17, but he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto him that the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed from them. Will you pray with me this morning? Father God in heaven is indeed we are grateful. We are grateful, Father, simply for this opportunity that we have to come in the feast at the table of your word. Father, now I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay. Hide me behind your cross that no flesh would take any glory in what you ought to have. And Father, if you grant us these petitions and prayers, we'll be so ever mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor of which you are so worthy of. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that all those that love God say amen. amen. Look over at somebody and say, it'll happen before you know it. 
they don't believe it. They still worrying about the last problem they had. Look at somebody else and say, it's going to happen before you know it. What we come to terms with here is we're looking at passive as well as aggressive faith. The church has become aggressive so that Peter could be passive. Intercession takes the burden up off of you. That's why we are encouraged to pray one for another. Because intercession helps your brother and your sister to be able to bear the load that they have for themselves. Y'all talk to me, just be real for a moment. You've experienced some things in your life that you had to go to somebody and say, bro, sir, you don't know, but I just need you to pray for me. I'm going through some things. I got some things on my job. I got some things on my family and my home. I just need somebody to pray for me. So it says, it says here we had that the very thing he criticized Jesus for doing, which was storing on the ship, is what Peter was doing here. And isn't it, isn't it Peter that said in the storm, Master, carest thou not that we perish? How can you be sleeping in the middle of a storm? How he has matured up to this place in his life, trying to become like Jesus. Peter's sleep was a monument to the kind of faith that Peter had. Let me tell y'all something. When you really have faith in God and when you really trust God, the rain can be falling. The breakers can be dashing. The lightning can be flashing. Problems falling down all around you, but you can still trust in God. You can still have faith in God. And, 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 and that is what it takes. God has to take us through some COVID-19 situations in our lives. God has to take us through other circumstances in our lives in order to grasp our attention and to bring us to the point, hey, you might not think it now, but you need me every step, every minute, every hour, every second. You can't make it. As a matter of fact, the very breath you inhaling and exhaling, I gave it to you. And I can very much sure take it away. So, so what he does know that makes him rest and others faint, what he does know is that he serves a God that can calm the storms. He serves a God that can calm the storms. So Peter has taken something that we need to take when we find ourselves going through storms in life, and that is to take note. Take note at what God has already done in your life. Therefore, when you are faced with other circumstances in your life, you say, hey, devil, I know you might have thought you had something. Let me tell you about my God. He made a way for me, not just me. He made a way for my mama, my dad. I've seen God do something, so I'm not going to doubt God. So all of a sudden, there's a light standing over Peter. And the angel is kind of rough to Peter. First thing he did was slap the man. Kind of slap Peter upside his head and say, man, now get up. And he says, I, I didn't come here for your comfort. I came for your crisis. And you know, sometimes when you pray and you ask God to deliver you from certain things, it's not going to happen comfortably the way like you think it ought to happen. Sometimes God has to come and step right smack dab in the middle of your situation. Move some stuff around, rearrange some stuff to let you know, hey, I've been here and I'm here to stay. I have put my mark on your life. I am your God and you are my child. So he says, I didn't come for your comfort. I came for your crisis. I I'm, I'm going to wake you up, but it's not going to be, oh, oh, just get up and wake up. And he says something crazy for the angel. He says, make haste. We got to get away from here. Let's make haste. Why is the angel going to hurt? Is he scared? It, well, what's going on? They cannot be the map. What, what's going on? But the king's business, talking about God, requires haste. If you're going to really do it for God, you can't be lethargic about what you're doing for God. You cannot, well, I, I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure, I'm working on it, I'm gradually going to get around to it, and eventually I, I, it's just going to happen. No, you got to make haste. You got to put some effort. You got to put some energy into what you're doing. Don't expect everybody else to do the work for you. I can't remember exactly how the poem goes, but I'm sure y'all heard it, how everybody waited on somebody to do it and nobody ever did it. And that, that's, like, that's like us a lot of times. We know what we could do, but we put it off on other folk to get it done. And then when they don't get it done, oh, I knew I should have did it. 
when God says to Peter, here, because you just imagine, Peter, I'm just imagine, I'm just trying to put myself in Peter's shoes here for a minute. I'm in, I'm in prison. And these folk praying, and all of a sudden, my, my chains have come off. First thing I'm doing, I'm striking out, bro. Okay, I'm on nobody, nobody else. I, I'm trying to get out of there. I mean, like, hey, like, I, I know God's hand had to be in here somewhere. God had to be at work here somewhere. So you know what? I'm going to make case. Thank you for the blessing. Holla at you. I got to get up out of here. But you can see Peter's determination and his faith all throughout his willingness to obey what the angel told him. And you see how when they got to the first gate, the angel was with them. How when they got to the second gate, the angel was with them. But then when he got to a place to where he knew where he was, the angel left him. What, what, what does that have to do with this? God will be with you as long as you can't do anything with him. But a lot of times, God will set you right out there in the middle of a circumstance. Now, you have been through a couple things like this before, so now you ought to have some strength. You ought to have some know-how on how to make it, on how to survive. God won't put you through anything that you're not built for. You know that, right? God won't put you through anything that you're not able to sustain under. And let me tell you, we serve a God that even when you feel like you can't make it, he'll come and he'll help you bear that cross. He'll come in here and help you to bear those burdens that feel so heavy for you, those anxieties and those worries that you have going on in your life. He said, you just cast your cares on me. I care for you. I care for you. So, so, so we got to stop laying around saying, eventually, I'm going to get out of it. Eventually, I'm going to do better. Eventually, I'm going to change my attitude. Eventually, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. What if eventually never comes around? What if that opportunity for you to do that never comes around? You ought to be living every day of your life in expectation of the coming of the Messiah. Well, what did it say? Your low, your live one, live every day as if it is your last. You don't know who's watching you. Can I tell you something? You know the life that you live is the only Bible that a lot of folk are ever going to read. Truth be told, a lot of folk will never pick up the written word of God and read it. They're looking at your life. You say you're a Christian? You say you're a child of God? Let me see it. Don't just talk Jesus, but live Jesus. Live it. And to, to, for, for your faith to get to such a point to where you don't just talk scripture, but you can see it being lived out in your everyday life. Help me. Help me. These folk been praying. That's, that's something amazing of itself. Church folk praying for church folk. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Peter, Peter, they've been praying for Peter. All the while, this man was locked up and was in jail. But the minute he get out, they surprised. <laughs> Can you see right? Yo! The prayers work! Guess who had the gate? You crazy. You been out there in Judas Garden. What you, been, what you got going on? What you, what, you been, what you been doing? And isn't it amazing? Because we've all had those moments in our life. To where we pray and we pray and we pray and when God finally does it, we don't believe it. God, Lord, 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 do this, Lord, Lord, do that, Lord, do that. Or, or, or even if it's not the case that we don't believe it, we give the credit to ourselves. Because, you know, evidently there just had to be something magnificent that we did, you know, to help the problem to get better. Let me tell you, man, in love your own strength, you ain't got the power to do nothing. You ain't even got the power. You know, everyone that you get up and go out there and crank up your car, you know you ain't got the power within yourself to do that. It is God that sat by your bed all last night, watched over you, protected you, woke you up, started you on your day. Who wouldn't serve a God like him? When the angel shows up, says, make haste. Come on, right now. We ain't got no time to wait. Do you know that when it's time for you to leave or just say a, a, a a stronghold or whatever it is that you have in your life, you don't need to mosey around trying to get away from that thing. You need to make haste. 
you need to get in a hurry because the longer you are lingering around, the long, you look at you look at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. and, and, and you look at Lot and his family. Lot and his family then eventually they weren't living on the streets of Sodom. They, 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 his wife wasn't attending the the, the uh, Sodom uh, uh, women's Rotary Club, and you know her, her children weren't going to Sodom High. It wasn't none of that. At first, they pitched their tent towards Sodom. But eventually, those things that were going on in Sodom lured them on into the things that were going on into Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's why, church, it is of the utmost importance that you be careful to make sure that your faith is grounded in the word of God. Because if not every wind that come by, you'll be flying around, you'll be going. Everything that comes, you won't have anything to sustain you. You better make sure your anchor grips a solid rock. So the angel comes and says, make haste. Come right now. And then he says, the chains fell off while the guards were asleep. <laughs> the chains fell off while the guards were asleep. Can you not see God's hand at work all throughout this story? And if you put yourself in the story, you can see God's hand at work in your own life because I, I ain't trying to get in your business. I don't know if you'd have been in prison or not, but all of us have been through some circumstances. All of us have been through some situations where we have had to depend on God to show up and to make a way for us and now you are able to sit in here today and you can say with assurance had it not been for the Lord that was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Everybody else worried. Man, I went, I'm going to get to see the judge. I want to win, I'm going to get out of here. But Peter was asleep. This man was on the boat, not on the boat, he was in the prison, sleep. Takes you back to a story kind of familiar about that, right? When Jesus was on the ship, and who came looking for him? All right, Peter came looking for him, dying in the boat. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Do you not see what's going on out here? But Jesus had the mindset that Peter got here in Acts chapter 12. And that is when you're living for God, when you're serving God, when your hand is holding on to the unchanging hands of God, I don't care what's going on in your life, why everybody else is worrying and fretting and crying, you can lay down, get you two or three pillars and go to sleep at night. You can get sleep because you know who your God is. You know who's protecting you. You know who's watching after you. Y'all, uh, can I tell y'all something? And I ain't but how oh, 24 years old. Yeah, praise God. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. But I am at a place in my life. I don't worry about anything. I don't worry about nothing. Because I know who my daddy is. I know who my father is. And I know before I ever was birthed into this world, he had a plan. What did he say? I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope, and to give you a future. Before your mama ever thought of a name, I already had a plan and a purpose and a future outlined for you. If you would only get in my will and do what I am asking of you to do. Can you imagine how much different our lives would be if we really lived for God? I'm not talking about a Sunday morning Christianity. I'm talking about when you have dedicated yourself, mind, soul, and body to the cause of Jesus Christ. Uh, when, when, when you get to that point to where you don't care what people say anymore because they talked about him. And if I'm going to be in connection with him, surely they're going to talk about me as well. Long as they don't try and crucify me, then we got a problem. We got a problem then. It is no secret what God can do. This book that we read is full of stories, but they all have impact with a spiritual meaning. What meaning do we get out of this? That is, if you trust God, no matter how low, no matter how dark, God will always 
make a way for you. I need to say that to the folk that's on live because they ain't get it in here. Let me tell you, I don't care how low and I don't care how dark. As long as God, God will always make a way for you, God will always provide a state. Didn't the scripture say that God does not tempt us, but he allows us to be tempted? And with the temptation, he also provides a way for us to escape. Before the devil ever presented the temptation, God already had an answer and a remedy for it. And truth be told, he is the answer. He is the remedy. He is the solution. Jesus! It's all that we need. So he says, he says oh, and, and, and everything that we said up to now, uh, to the great but what, 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 what really happened that piqued my attention? Because when Peter goes through the gate, they walk down the street. He and the angel. He said one thing that made me preach this to y'all this morning. He says, I came to myself. And I thought, you mean all of that happened? And you just not realize what's going on? Sound like some of us, don't it? Some of us really got to just knock our head against about five, six, seven walls before we actually get the idea, get the big picture about what's going on. So he says, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, because they walk through the gate, they go down the street, he and the angel, and he says, I came to myself. And he says, I, I, I was out before I knew it. I, 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 this happened. See, the last time I saw he came to himself was with the prodigal son. You remember that? And the Bible says he came to himself. So you mean to tell me you had to go through all of that? before you could come to yourself. So can I say to maybe the parent that's watching or maybe here that's worried about your child, that's worried about your loved one or, or somebody else that you may be connected with, sometimes some people got to find themselves out in the fall away. Sometimes they got to find themselves down there eating the husk and the slop with the hog. Sometimes they got to go through all of that before a light goes off and they say, hey man, Man, you know my daddy got all that stuff back home, and I'm out here laying in the hall pit. Yeah. Same way, the re and because that story is a relationship that we have with our master, that we have with our God, and that is no matter how far out you go, you can always come back home. If you will only come to yourself, you can always come back home. And what will the father, the father will not be mad or angry with you, but what are you going to say? While he's seeing you a far off coming, he's going to run out at you. So he says he, he came to himself. Somebody here maybe this morning need to come to, to yourself. The prodigal son came to himself having been intoxicated, not with stuff that other folk put on him, but with the sins that he brought upon himself. Oh man, how so quickly we try to usher out those sins that we bring upon ourselves and try to put them on somebody else. Oh, you know, I did it because she and I did it because he and the devil. They don't stop giving the devil all that credit. Because of y'all, be real. Every day that you get up, it's a fight to do what's right. Every day that you wake up, you, you, you have a desire to do good. But like Paul said, when I desire to do good, evil is always around. Therefore, the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. This is my favorite part. Oh, wretched man, not that I was, but that I am. Paul, ain't this after your conversion? Yeah. Ain't this after you've been saving folk? Yeah. Paul said, you know what? Even though I'm a globe trotting, academician, apostle of Jesus Christ, you know what? I still got issues. I still got some things, some problems in my life. And, 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 and I, can't, I can't be too proud to say what I won't ever do again. I just ain't met the right circumstance. Because when desire meets opportunity, we are all subject to sin. He came to himself, 
to recognize who he was. But Peter was liberated before he, before he knew that. The prodigal son knew it, and therefore he was liberated. I can just imagine this guy. Your daddy was kind enough, he didn't throw up no argument. Here you go. You want it? Here go. Take it. You out there just squandering around, man. And can you just imagine? Everybody wanted to party with him. Everybody wanted to be his friend. Y'all know, y'all know product of having a party friend. Woo we up in there. Everybody wanted to be around him. Everybody wanted to be connected to him. Have y'all ever experienced that in your own life? Well, while you ride high, everybody want to be connected to you. But the minute something happened, everybody want to back off. Like, 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 like they don't know you. Like, 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 what's going on? Like, who are you? Like, what has happened? Like, you are a totally different person, man. If you cannot be with me while I'm going through a storm, I don't need you after the rain is gone. I need somebody that's going to give me their umbrella. I need somebody that's going to help me find some shelter. I need somebody that's going to help me get out of the problem that I have going on in this life. Don't walk away and talk about me. Do something that you can to help your brother or your sister. Peter could not differentiate between what he was dreaming and what he was living. He went from dreaming about it to walking in it. From dreaming about it to walking in it. And if y'all just take about two or three seconds, just think back over the past years of your life, you would recognize that some things you used to pray about, you living in it now. So some things that you used to work, can this happen? Can that happen? It's all going on right now. I, I went from thinking about it to now. It's going on in my life. Who else did it but God? I didn't have money. I wasn't qualified. I didn't meet the qualification. I was just in the right place at the right time. It whoops upside my head. God sent down a blessing my way. He's an awesome God. So he, he went from Dreaming about it. So, so Peter's like, okay, like I really need somebody to bring me some smelling salt. I, I really need somebody to come and pinch me or something because, man, this don't seem real. I've had some experiences like that in my life. I don't know about you with God. I've had some experiences in my life where, man, I don't believe this. How could this happen? And the only logical answer is God did it. God did it. So, so, so never could they have imagined these people, even though they were people of faith, they were people of prayer, they, they trusted God, they loved God, they never would have thought that God would have answered their prayers like what they prayed for. Yeah. What was y'all praying for? For his imprisonment to be expedited, for him to get out of prison. What happened? He got out of prison. Why are you acting surprised? You heard it all your life. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it. And, 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 and they're shocked. They're amazed because God answered their prayer. Because God answered their request. And it wasn't just that he answered it, but it was how he answered it. These folk was in the middle of prayer. A knock come at the door. Rhoda, go out there, the little servant girl. She went out there to check the door. Went out there and checked. Woo! Peter, Lord have mercy. Come back and tell everybody else about it. They don't believe her. God has answered their request. In our own lives, can we not see? How God has answered our prayers time and time and time and time again. And well, I don't know what the prayer was for. Maybe it was for sickness or, or maybe it was just a general prayer. Whatever you had in your life and you have seen God make a way. I know your prayer is working right now because since I've been standing up here, I ain't had not one pain in my head. So I know, I know your prayer is working. I know the hand of God is in here this morning because that's going on. When you trust God and when you serve him. When you put your mind on him, when you set your heart on him, I don't care what happens, I don't care what comes your way, God will always provide a way of escape for his children. Tell somebody, I ain't telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I know. He is an awesome God. 
So, so he comes to the house and he knocks on the door. We've been talking about Rhoda. She comes to the door and she hears Peter's voice. And they're still in there praying and beating the floor and, talk, and doing all the stuff that they were rebuking the devil, pleading the blood, everything they could do, trying to get Peter out of jail. And Peter was out before they knew. <laughs> Rhoda goes to the door and says, y'all, Peter out there. They said, no, nah, it's a ghost. It's an angel or something else. Not Peter. What they were praying for had been answered before they knew it. Peter was out before they knew it. Their prayers were answered before they knew it. Rhoda tried to tell them. They wouldn't hear it. They opened the door and Peter was standing there. I believe they was from Missouri. You just had to show them what was going on. You know, you know they, they didn't believe in nothing else that nobody else had. Say, now I need to see it for myself. Come, and, and, and he's knocking. And what y'all have been praying for, what you have been seeking God for, what you have been trusting God for, is standing right there at the door. Just waiting on you to open the door and recognize him that he's there. Y'all, it's a message. It's in the message. I hope that you, I hope, I hope, I really hope that you catch. I don't want y'all walking out of here like a deer caught in head like, like, man, what was that man talking about? What I'm saying to you is that when you live your life in accordance to the will of God, when you trust him and when you fully submit your will to God before you can pray, you already got an answer. He says, all the answers in him are yea and amen. amen. He said, all the promises in him are yea and amen. That's why I trust him. Because he got it all. Well, y'all know the song, all in his hands. He got it all in his hands. Guess what? Not, not just all of the material thing, but he got you, my brother. He got you, my sister, in his hand. So why are you worried? Why are you fretting? Why are you crying when God got you in his hand? Do you know that not one sparrow in this, in this world falls to the ground without God knowing? Not even a little measly bird, something that we don't even consider to be significant. It can't even fall to the ground without God knowing about it. I'm sure he knew that bird mama was too. I'm sure, I'm sure he knew who the bad grandma was too. He knew all of that before it ever hit the ground. So if God cares for the lilies of the field and for the fowl of the air, how much more does he care for you? If he cares enough to provide sustenance for the birds and for the lilies, surely he cares enough about his sons and his daughters to provide them with the things that they need. That's why David could say with assurance, I was young, now I'm older. <laughs> Yet have I not seen the, that's the key word, righteous. You can't just be living any kind of way and expect blessings just be coming through every door and every window. You have to be living your life in accordance to the will of God. Well, preacher, how do you how do you say that? I, I see folk out here that don't love God, living better than me. That's cool. God ain't the only person that can give you some stuff. And then a lot of the, we got to get out of that trying to say, well, you know, I'm over here and I'm serving God and I'm struggling, and these folk over here, you know, they doing this and they doing that. You man, you got to stop living it because you're not living and serving God just for material stuff. I hope, I, I hope that's not why you're serving God. I hope that you don't come to worship. I hope that you don't praise God just to see, oh, what God gonna give me next. No, but you are serving God simply because of the sacrifice that He made on Calvary's cross when He shed His innocent blood for the remission of your sin and if you believe in your mind that if you remain faithful unto him one day you receive a crown of life that will never fade away that's why I trust him because I got a track record with him I got a track I got some history with God and even the stuff that I wasn't around for I still believe can't nobody 
put no doubt in my mind about the word of God. I believe the word of God is true. I believe the word of God is without error. It don't need anybody to come along and correct or, imp or put in anything else. It is good just as it is. And we got so many people all throughout history and time that feel as though they knew just a little bit better than God. Or we ought to put this in now. We ought to put that in now. When God, when God told John when he was out there on the Isle of Pampas, he was right. He said, shut up the book, John. Don't write no more. That was it. You ever been before a judge and when he do that? <laughs> what can be said after that? No, it's, it's over with. It's over with. When he bangs that gavel, that means that it is it, it is settled. God has settled everything for us in heaven, y'all. It's all been settled. It's all been settled. It's already been taken care of. You know what? Even your house been taken care of. Richard, what? I didn't know I had a house. Yeah. John chapter 14. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, you can be there also. Whether I go, you know. And the way you know, Thomas said, Father, we don't even know where you're going. So how can we know the way? You looking at the way. You looking at the truth. You looking at the life. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. God's got a way. You can't get over. God's got a way. You can't get on. The God's got a way. You can't go around. You got to come in at the door. You got to come in at the door. And he is standing as Peter was at the door. But he's not standing at a physical door. He's standing at the door of your heart. And he's knocking. Well, he said, if any man would open the door, he said, I want to come in. I want, I want to sup with you. I want to come in and I want to make my abode with you. God, he is simply saying, I want to come in and I want to have fellowship with you. Yes, Lord. I, I don't want this relationship that we have to be kind of like a, a boss and an employee thing. I want you to know the connection that you and I have. You are my son. You are my daughter. Not only you are that, you're my friend. Man, if I don't ever hear any other good news, it's good news just to know that God considers me his friend. Friends don't always do what you expect of them to do. But he considers us to be his friend. Friends look out for each other, don't he? He sure enough looks out for us. Friends take care of each other. Guess what? He sure enough takes care of us. And you know, it's just so amazing that things that we aren't even aware of, we hadn't even got to that week yet, that month yet. God saw it before it ever came. Knew it was going to be just a little bit too much trouble for you. Went over there and he fixed some things around and changed some things up so that his word would be true. Yes. That he would not give you anything that you are not able to bear. Yes, so we can trust God. We can put our faith in it. You can put some stock in God. It, 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 it ain't, it, it ain't going to crash. I can tell you that. You can, put, you, can put your, you can put faith in God. Has he failed you yet? So you don't have no reason to believe that he will fail you now. And when we all together as a unit, it's good when you do it individually, but we got to do this collectively. Get the mindset that God got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, God got it. He's going to take care. He's going to take it. Because before we can ever conjure up the words to pray and ask, he already had an answer. He already had a solution. He already had it worked out. Therefore, we can trust him. And we can put our faith in him. It will happen before you know it. Preacher, that was your sermon topic. How does that fit? It will happen before you know it. Well, you got it. Their prayers were answered. While they was praying. Then in the midst of Father God, I come to you, bow down head and bend the knee. You know, that was in the midst of all of that. Boom, boom, boom. There's a knock at the door. 
that worry that you've been fretting over and laying up, crying, and how this and how that, that God is standing at the door. All those tears, those unnecessary tears that God is standing at the door. Those wayward children that you're just tired of praying for, that God is waiting at the door. Whatever issue, whatever problem, whatever ailment that you have going on, God is standing at the door. And he's just waiting on you to come and open. Contestant, you have chosen door number one. <laughs> but with God, man, what I love about him, call me, ain't no zonks behind none of, none of the curtains, so I ain't got to worry about it. So no matter what curtain I open, I'm going to give you a good deal. Touch pop, you know what I'm talking about? Let's make a deal. She know what I'm talking about. You know, you know whatever curtain you get with God, it's all going to be good. So so, whatever way God decides to bless me, I'll be good. Whatever God allows me to go through, I'll be good. Because he allowed it for a reason. Last week you found out there's a purpose behind your pain. Whatever God allows you to go through in this life, there's a teaching moment in it for you. Let me tell you, I don't care how much it may hurt you, because truth be told, y'all, we go through some stuff in this life, and not necessarily physical hurt, but mental hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of us are walking around here, got a chest of cat smile, but tore up in the head. Because we never took time to get over those unresolved issues that you had going on in your life. And I tell folk, I tell folk, y'all, it's good to talk to God. You ought to talk to God every day. Amen. But when you got certain stuff going on in your life, you need to go talk to somebody. Yeah. You need to go sit down. You need to talk to somebody because a, a lot of people fulfill, oh, you know, I, 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 I took it to the Lord. And I talked about it, but you still carrying it around with you. Because, so apparently you ain't really gave it to God. You just told him about it, and you just decided to carry the problem on. Yeah. Sound like us, don't it? Yeah. But Lord, you know what I got going? Lord, I just need you to take care of it. As soon as you get to talking to God about it, you get on the phone. Let me tell you about what I got going on. You know what? When you trust God with the issue, there's no more need to discuss it. When you trust God with the issue, there's no more need to worry about it. Give it to God. He said in his word, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So that worry, God said, man, they ain't even for you to worry about. Give it to me. And let me take care of it. Because y'all, truth be told, you, you see what anxieties and, and worries and cares do to us. Yeah. They're tear us up if we let it. Yeah. When you let that stuff get on the inside, and once it takes some root, oh, no, 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 once it takes some roots, yeah. you know what? You know, I gotta go to Alabama. You know, you know, we get some roots down in there. A lot of folk dealing with some deep rooted issues. Yeah. And people will badger you as to why you can't get over it, but they don't know that thing that took root. <laughs> ah, you, you, and you know, you can't be too hard on your brother and your sister simply because theirs have taken root and you got rid of yours before it could take root. Now you know that, hey, they got something that's, okay, it's, it's bigger than what we see on the surface. There's some deep, a deeper rooted issue, and that has to be addressed before anything else can ever take place. Before anything else can happen, you have to go to the heart of the matter. You have to go to the source of the issue, the source of the problem, the source of the pain. Why is it that you keep going through this same old stuff? We keep going back to this thing. We keep, going, we keep getting back to this. Why is it that you just keep going through the same old motion, same old thing? Why can you not learn from it? That has to first of all be addressed before we can get something else in this thing. It's going to happen before you know it. What I've been praying about, man, it's going to happen. It's quicker than I think it's going to happen. Might not happen when I think it ought to happen, but guess what? It's going to happen. And that's what I love about God. Because if we could just say, Lord, I want it August 7, 2020, it would be like God was your bellboy. It would be like God was your servant or something that you could just beckon and he comes. 
But what, what I love about God is he waits until all of your resources have been have been done away with. He waits good until, look, everybody you had in your little black book that you could call, you call all of them, could none of them do nothing for you. You went to this person, went to that person, went to this person, and God said, uh-huh, now who you going to call? Y'all know God got a sense of humor, right? He'll, he'll let you, he'll let you exhaust all of those other avenues. All of those. Because y'all know, and truth be told, we go through stuff in life and we run to everybody else before we run to God. So God got to allow some things to happen to allow those people, oh, they can't come through for you. They could have helped you at one point, but they can't help you with this thing right here. Y'all know what? Can I let you on a little secret? Some things in this life you can't go through with nobody else. You can't take everybody through the issues that you have in this life. Because truth be told, majority of the folk around you don't need to be around you in the first place. So what you think they're going to do when the rubber hits the road and you're going through trouble? Oh, you've been going to that church all this time. God ain't helping you. You've been going out here doing this. God ain't making a way. God ain't. They will create doubt in your mind and in your heart. And let me tell y'all, I, and I truly believe this, I've been saying this for a long time, the people that you have around you are one or two things. They'll either win in your sails or wait on your ship. One is going to help me to get to where I need to be and the other is going to keep me stagnant. I can't get nowhere because I got all of this weight. You need to check out, do you have more weight than you have weight? So maybe that's why it ain't happy yet. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why things aren't in the motion yet. I got to check out who's, who's around me. Who am I confiding in? I thought they was a refrigerator. They are a cup full of holes. <laughs> can't, you, just, you just can't hold that. You got to pay attention to who is around. As I gave the example earlier, you may come into it being oh, this upstanding person. Oh, I'm strong in the faith. I'm this and I'm that. Hang around long enough. Hang around long enough. Either your influence is going to overtake them or their influence is going to overtake you. It, it ain't no middle ground. It's going to be one or the other. Now, you remember when you were a child and your mom used to say, oh, you don't hang around with us. I don't, I don't hang around them, you know. Well, mom, that's my friend. Now, you don't hang around. I know their mama. I know their daddy. I know their friend. You leave them for the crazy. They knew something you didn't know. <laughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. Really, if you want to be honest about it, can't nobody stop nothing but you. Sometimes, a lot of the times, we are our biggest hindrance. We can't get nowhere because of us. We can't do anything because of us. It can happen because of us. You can just look at it. You gather a group of people right now, collectively, and say, we're going to pray for this person to be released from prison. A good percentage of the folk in there, I mean, we're praying for a brother did it. They not ready. They didn't hand it down to judgment. He going to jail. I mean, ain't that what you can do? Like, what? I ain't going up there. I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to watch the ham and the ham now. She's coming back on night. I'm going up there to pray. James said something. It's one of my favorite scriptures. James said, he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. I'm going to give an example of that. I'm going to close it out. Now, give, uh, uh, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. You can tell the difference in it. So when somebody prayed that trust God and when somebody that prayed that don't really trust God, don't really know God. This, this, this is the example that he's talking about. Some folk, they'll come and they say, oh, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. But I just need you to do something. Lord, I, I, I know you can do something now. Come on and do something for me. <laughs> but Sister Coffee, once you have gotten a couple miles under your belt with God, 
Once you have been through some storms and some situations in his life that has taught you how to really trust in God and taught you how to really depend on God. Man, come, I don't care what comes. I don't care what goes. I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here. God has kept me up until now. And I know the same God that kept me in the past tense of my life is going to keep me right now in the current tense of my life and things that I don't even know about yet. As of yet, in the future, God's going to take care of that as well. He's going to take care of that as well. Before we know it, could you, can you imagine if we as a, as a congregation, if we as a unit, would get in the same line and on one accord? Can you imagine how quickly this place would fill up? Can you imagine how quickly goals that we have set would be accomplished when we all get in the same mindset. But, but, but uh, you, 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 can't, you can't have, uh, 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 I'm going to say a horse and buggy. You got two mules up front. One mule want to go this way. Another mule want to go that way. It's, it's going to be an issue. You can't get to where you need to go because people are trying to go in different directions. We have to get on the same chord. We have to get on the same sheet of music. And once we all work together, oh, peace and harmony. You can see it happening. Folk walk through the doors and say, oh, man, them folk are unified. They love one another. Man, I ain't never met that one for a day in my life. I feel like I've known her forever because they're exemplifying love. What did he say? What did he say? He said, he said with love and kindness have I drawn thee. If you want to be, if you want friends, you got to first of all what? Show yourself. So when that brother man comes off the street, smelling like a hot bottle of liquor, you show yourself friendly. When, when, when the folk come in and have going every which way but the right way, you show yourself friendly. People come in, don't look nothing like you. You show yourself friendly. Because you never know what the scripture said. He said, be careful how you treat, because you might just be entertaining angels. Unaware. Whether they are plumber or the president of the United States, you treat everybody the same way. Treat everybody with love. Treat everybody with kindness. The way that you want to be treated. Time has been possible. Time has been. It will happen before we know it. Realize after today that if you didn't know it, be careful what you ask God for. Be careful what you pray for. Be careful, look, be careful what you pray for to the point that that's really what you want. Lord, remove this. Lord, remove that. Are you really ready? Are you really, really ready for God to take that stuff out of your life? Are you really ready for him to move? it out of your life. Be careful what you ask God for because he's good on his promise. He is a God that can not lie. When it comes to us, you take the not out and you got it right. We can lie. But when it comes to God, he can not lie. Every promise he made was just good as true. And the promises that he has made towards us, we can bet on them as well. They are just as good as true. He's going to take care of us. I know right now we're a little on edge. In the past week, how many? 5,000 new cases? Right here in front. And we're like, man, are we about to go through this again? But before the second round ever came, God already had a solution. I believe that. I believe God already had a way of escape for us. So just like we did in the first round, just saying, what we're going to do? Trust God. We're going to depend on God. If he kept you then, guess what? He'll keep you now. If you keep your faith in him, keep your trust in God. And he'll take you all, not just some of the way, he'll take you all the way. My brother, my sister, if, you, if you're here today and you find yourself in sin, um, you ain't no different than nobody else in the fact that you have sin. The good thing about it is that you recognize that you have fallen short. That, 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 that comes with a good conscience towards God to when you have got on the wrong side of the track. You realize, hey, I'm on the wrong side of the track. I need to get back on the right side of the track. Uh, I've said this many times. You've heard it many times. It doesn't take but one sin 
to bring separation between you and God. One sin, one sin. And a lot of us, if we be real with ourselves, we ain't got a lot of sins that we struggle with. We just got one or two big billboards that we, you know, we that we dealing with. And those big things got a whole lot of little things that come along. That's another sermon. That's another sermon. You know, they got a whole lot of other things that go along with it. But whatever problem you have, it ain't nothing too big my God can't help. Nothing too big that my God can't help. If you would only bring it to him. God, I trust you. It's yours. I, when, when I remember when, uh, when uh, uh, Sennacherib wrote King Hezekiah that threatening letter. And it says that when he got the letter, uh, King Hezekiah looked at that letter and said he went into the temple. He spread it out before God. In other words, he said, God, this is your mail. This one written to me. I can't do nothing with Sennacherib and his army. And the Bible says that in one night, God sent one angel. He didn't even call Michael. He didn't even call Gabriel. He just said, hey, you go. And the Bible says that by the time that angel got through flapping his wings, that 185,000 soldiers were dead. Because instead of King Hezekiah trying to call out to neighboring nations, send some of y'all army over here. Send some of y'all folk over here to help us. He realized the battle was not even his to fight. But he gave it to God. And because he gave it to God, God took care of it. Before, get out my sermon! Before he knew it! God took care of the issue. So my brother, my sister, whatever weight, whatever baggage you are carrying. So some folks, you didn't see it, but they bought about five or six suitcases in here with us more. Like they going, so what you finna go on vacation? You can't, you can't see it, but you can't see it. But some people, they got all kind of stuff they just drag it with. Every day they live, they just drag it. <laughs> can't get nowhere. Can't, can't even get through the door because they're trying to drag it. Ooh, but ooh, it's just a beautiful thing to feel a weight come off of you. When you get to a place in your life, you say, man, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. God has been too good to me for me to get to this place in my life and allow things like that to keep me back, to hold me down. I dare not be held down and held back when my God is who he is. Dare not. So whatever, whatever baggage, whatever luggage, whatever worry you have carrying on today, you need to give it to God. You need to give it to him. You need to give it to him. And that does not mean more luggage in on the way. But the same thing you did with that one. Here you go, God. I got some more for you. I'll be back next week probably. I don't know. But whenever it comes, hey, I'm coming back and I'm going to give it right over to you. I'm going to give it right over to you. The prayers of the righteous, they still avail much. We all need to be praying for one another. Pray for one another. That God would bless everybody. That God would protect everybody, especially during the time that, that we have right now. And above all things, that God would keep us unified. Yes. That God would keep us together. Yes. And that the love that God has for us is the same love that we will have for one another. That love that runs from heart to heart and mind to mind. That love that, amen, even if you do wrong, I'm going to tell you about what you did. I'm going to love you at the end of the day. That's the kind of love that we need to have for Amen. If you're here today and you have sin in your life, don't, don't man, uh, don't ne never, and I have to say this, don't ever feel bad for asking somebody to pray for you. Don't ever say, well, uh, you know, you know, they, they, they look at, they look at, spirit, no, 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 ain't about that. Because first of all, you ain't talking to them. You talking to God. And you're asking God to help you. That's how so soon they forget what God has done in their life and what God has brought them out of. But bring your problems to God. Bring your words to God and let God take care of you. Yeah. My brother, my sister, if you're here today and you don't yet know the Lord as your Savior, you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Let me tell you, we talked about it on Wednesday night. It's a great example. I love that. Um, when, in, in the days of Noah's time, um, God instructed Noah to build an ark. Uh, did he have an ark for each tribe? 
Did he have a art for different heights? He gave him the specifics of how to build that one off. And as I said Wednesday night, I do believe that if everybody on the face of the earth would have decided to hear what Noah was saying, it would have been enough room for everybody on the earth. I believe, I believe it would have been enough room for everybody on the earth. But we see right there, that was just a mere image for us of what was to come. Everybody that did not hearken unto the voice of Noah, what happened? They were destroyed. They were laid to waste. But then, a hundred years, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. What is rain? What is rain? Up until this time, they had only seen a little mist, a little dew that would form on the ground. They knew nothing about rain, but no, it's coming. It's coming. And when that day came in, water coming up from the wells out of the deep. Water coming in. He meant rain was coming. But everybody that was spared, Noah and his sons and their families and those animals, they were saved on that one hog. And I do believe that God's church is big enough that everybody can fit in it. If they would only obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. This ain't Burger King. Can't have it that way. It ain't going to corral. You know how you get in the buffet and you go up there, they got some stuff you just don't like, so you don't get it. So you go over here, I, I, I want a steak, that's what I want. We did well, thank you. You know, we get that, go in there and we decide what we want. We pick out what we want. Can't do that with God. You got to take God and his word just as it is. You can't go in God's word and say, well, I'm going to take that out because I like that. But, you know, that you know that right there talk about my issues that I got going on. So I don't really want to listen to what that got going on. So I'm going to leave that right there. You can't do that. You take God's word as it is. Take God's word as it is. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you come by hearing this word, believe in the same. Repenting of your sins and confessing Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Being baptized with him in the watery grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, done away with. Never to come up before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add us to his body. And it's just so good to know when you wake up in the morning, I'm on God's mind. I'm on God's mind. When I wake up in the morning, God is thinking about me. That's a wonderful thing to know, wonderful thing to know. And my brother, my sister, if you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, we beg and we plead with you. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing another day because if you don't recognize by now, I tell you, your time, my time, time is winding up. So my brother, my sister, if you're here today, you're subject to the invitation. We beg and we plead. Why not come to Jesus now? Together we stand and sing the song of invitation.